if you eat a pomegranate and I eat a pomegranate, we could not get the same benefit from that pomegranate. That's not how it works. Pomegranates do possess really interesting longevity attributes, but there's no real way without going into just an absolute research setting for us to determine if you are getting that same longevity benefit from pomegranate as I am. And it has to do with something called a postbiotic, which quite frankly, once you learn this, you can't unlearn it and it just warps how you look at nutrition for the rest of your life. It's kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing. A postbiotic is what we extract from a food as far as the bacteria within our gut breaking it down. So essentially, the bacteria that is in our gut breaks down polyphenols and different components of foods and byproducts can be different things. So in other words, you can extract a benefit from a food that I might not extract, and I can extract a benefit from a food that you might not extract, all based upon what it turns into after the bacteria in our gut has had its way with it. Pomegranates are a perfect example of this. So from a longevity perspective, there was a really interesting study published in the journal Biochemistry and Biophysics. It was a rodent model study, but very fascinating. Took a look at uh, dietary restriction in terms of longevity. So what they did is they put rats on a continuous feeding diet, and then they also put them on uh, different rats on an intermittent fasting every other day diet. So every other day they intermittent fasted, serious caloric restriction. And then another third group, they did intermittent fasting every other day plus polyphenols, okay? So they wanted to see if polyphenols could actually influence longevity in this case. Okay, they found that the intermittent fasting group lived longer than the continuous feeding group. Not a surprise, caloric restriction. But the intermittent fasting with polyphenol group ended up living even longer than the intermittent fasting group. So the polyphenols in this case did influence how long the rodents lived, which is very interesting. What they found is that it seemed to reduce inflammatory gene expression. So somehow these polyphenols made it so that they weren't expressing as many just inflammatory genes that could impact their lifespan. Well, what does this have to do with the pomegranates? Well, pomegranates contain polyphenols, some specific ones which we'll talk about. This is a perfect example of postbiotics. So pomegranates contain two polyphenols, okay? One is called ellagic acid, and the other one is called ellagitannins, okay? The ellagitannins and the ellagic acid get broken down by the bacteria in our gut and what is produced is something called urolithin A. Okay, so urolithin A is a compound from pomegranates that not everyone gets to reap the benefits of. And we're gonna talk about what this urolithin A does in the mitochondria in just a second, because there definitely is some linkage between that and longevity and overall health span. The European Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a really interesting study. It took a look at 100 people, okay? And they had them go into two different groups. Okay, one group consumed pomegranate juice, and another group ended up consuming uh, straight, pure urolithin A along with food. At the beginning of the study, at baseline, only 12 of the 100 participants had detectable levels of urolithin A to begin with. So what that means is at baseline, without consuming any pomegranates or anything, only 12% of people actually even had this cool compound, urolithin A, in their bodies. At the end of the study, the pomegranate group, 40% of the pomegranate group ended up having urolithin A. Well, that's cool, but why only 40%? Well, because for whatever reason, only 40% of the people that had the pomegranate had the exact specific makeup of the bacteria that they needed to ultimately extract urolithin A or create urolithin A. So if pomegranate is a really tremendous longevity fruit, then it doesn't matter because I don't know if I'm getting the same effect that you're getting, right? What's interesting is that the group that had the urolithin A directly, they ended up having higher levels of urolithin A and the exposure to urolithin A was six times more than the pomegranate group. So there was more urolithin A exposure by directly consuming pure urolithin A. So this whole urolithin A thing, it comes back down to mitochondrial health, which we'll talk about how urolithin A impacts the mitochondria. The mitochondria is like, it's our power grid. It's how we manufacture energy in our body. And as we get older, our mitochondrial health 
just tends to go down. We have more mitochondrial dysfunction. We have more mitochondrial damage. It's part of life. Our power grid just ultimately gets a little bit weaker. But this is typically a result of damaged mitochondria, and then you end up with damaged mitochondrial DNA that give birth to more damaged mitochondrial DNA, and it's just a downward spiral from there. But we do have a built-in mechanism within our body called mitophagy that actually gets rid of the cruddy garbage mitochondria and helps feed and nourish strong new mitochondria and generate new mitochondria. It's called mitochondrial biogenesis. So the process of mitophagy is very much like autophagy, except we're specifically talking about the mitochondria in this case. So what is interesting about urolithin A is that when we do actually get it, there seems to be, based upon research, pretty phenomenal effects when it comes down to stimulating this whole mitophagy process, which becomes increasingly more important as we get older. There was a study that was published in the journal Nature Medicine. Now, it wasn't just in rodents. They also looked in uh, you know, smaller species as well. And what they found is that when they gave oral urolithin A to these species, what they were able to find was that there was an increase in mitophagy. And the way that they noticed this is because there was a decrease in overall mitochondrial number, but the overall respiratory capacity stayed the same, meaning their respiratory capacity didn't go down even though the mitochondria number went down. So what that meant is that they had more powerful mitochondria and got rid of the garbage mitochondria that were taking up space. So they were getting the same job done with significantly less, meaning they were more powerful and they had cleared out and gone through, well, mitophagy. Additionally, when looking at it longer term, longer term urolithin A ended up leading to potential mitochondrial biogenesis. And they saw this because then there was an increase in respiratory capacity. There was an increase, an improvement in respiratory capacity. And then six weeks for mice, if mice were on the urolithin A for six weeks, they had an improvement in exercise capacity. They could handle more exercise. They were definitely seeing improvements there. This is what's so interesting about this urolithin A, it's just hard to really extract from pomegranates. If you're interested in urolithin A, uh, today's video sponsor is a company called Timeline Nutrition, which is a Swiss company. They are the global leader in urolithin A research. So a lot of the research I can talk about with urolithin A, they really are a big leader in it. When it comes down to mitophagy, when it comes down to muscle, like muscle is so important for longevity. Okay, like a lot of times when you look at muscle wasting, when you look at sarcopenia, that has a correlation along with aging, right? So everything that we can do to maintain healthy, strong mitochondria, maintain muscle health, that is very, very imperative when it comes down to just our quality of life as we age. My experience with Timeline has been, it's an easy way to be able to get urolithin A. I do a low carb protocol, so I can't consume pomegranate juice. There's like 40 grams of sugar in a serving of it. It's obviously got benefits, but when you're consuming the sugar along with it, you have to ask the question if that is negating some of the effects. So my experience is that it's an easy way to be able to get that in. And I've definitely noticed a little bit more in the way of mental acuity, so maybe that's coming from the neuroprotective effect, but that's really my experience. Now, I'm someone that is heavily focused on maintaining muscle that I have worked really hard to build, a, because yes, I like the cosmetic effect of it. B, I like to work out. But as I get older, I'm paying more attention to how the muscle that I carry might help me out as I get older. So with Timeline, it's provided me a quick way to kind of get that in. So I definitely recommend it in that case. And they use something called MitoPure, which is a patented technology for urolithin A, which obviously the name makes sense with the mitochondria, right? Essentially what you're doing is you're upgrading your body's power grid. And that's really what you have to look at it as, right? As you get older, your power grid maybe isn't performing the way. So you're kind of doing a refurbishment of your power grid or you're just upgrading it so you can get a little bit more performance. They have a couple of different ways that you can take it. They have a berry powder that you could like add to yogurt and you can just add seamlessly into your diet. They also have a protein version where you're having urolithin A along with whey protein in a really delicious format. So you're getting a protein shake, which is obviously important for muscle as we've talked about, but you're also getting the urolithin A in that more bioavailable form. And then lastly, they have a soft gel. That way, if you don't want to have any carbohydrates at all, you don't really want to have food, you just want to be on the go and grab it. So you can try them out and save 10% off timeline down below using that link. So the link is going to be timelinenutrition.com slash Thomas. That's T-I-M-E-L-I-N-E 
N-U-T-R-I-T-I-O-N.com slash Thomas. TimelineNutrition.com slash Thomas and use code Thomas to save 10%. But now we have to look at human models, right? Well, this is where the interesting study comes in because it was published in JAMA, J-A-M-A, and took a look at 66 individuals in a randomized fashion. They gave subjects either 1,000 milligrams of urolithin A or a placebo. And what they found was really intriguing. They found that there were improvements in endurance, muscular endurance, in the hand and the leg for those that consumed the urolithin A. They also found there were reduced levels of acyl carnitine as well as ceramide, also reduced levels of C-reactive protein, the primary sort of marker for chronic inflammation. Now, when you look at acyl carnitine, for instance, this has been linked to stimulating the actions of inflammatory cytokines. So basically, it stirs up cytokine activity more. So lower levels of that would be a good thing. Ceramide has also been seen to inhibit mitochondrial respiration. So when we have lower levels of ceramide, we potentially have better mitochondrial respiration. So really promising stuff there. Now, again, it's too early to see the big, big picture, but we have enough data when we look at rodent, when we look at smaller species, and we look at some of these other things, especially now the newer stuff with humans, and it's really fascinating. But it doesn't stop there, because now we're starting to see some stuff in the world of neuroprotective effects and urolithin A being able to cross through the blood-brain barrier. So this study was published in the International Journal of Molecular Science. Okay, it took a look at rats with Parkinson's disease. And in this particular case, they weren't even using urolithin A, they were using pomegranate juice, which comes right back to pomegranates being pretty awesome. We don't know if rats and humans have the same microbiome, yada yada, in terms of the whole urolithin A postbiotic discussion, but still very interesting. They did find that there was a neuroprotective effect. One thing they found is that pomegranate juice in these Parkinson's rats did result in urolithin A ending up in the brain. Okay, so we found that urolithin A does seem to cross through the blood-brain barrier. They also found that urolithin A seemed to provide some protection from reactive oxygen species within the brain. There was also a protection from what is called alpha-synuclein aggregation. Okay, alpha-synuclein aggregation is basically a pileup that just disrupts how well uh, signals can really transmit in the brain. We'll explain that in just a second. Then there was an increase in aldehyde dehydrogenase in the brain, which is really, really important. We'll talk about that in a second. So with the alpha-synuclein, what that essentially means is by having a reduction in the aggregation of that, if you envision your brain as a bunch of highways and a bunch of intersections with stoplights, well, imagine there is a car wreck at an intersection. That is like having a blockage in a synapse where a neurotransmitter is trying to like, transmit a signal or carry something over, right? Well, if there's a car accident there, then it's gonna pile up and it's gonna affect through traffic. So in this particular case, this particular aggregation is like that car accident and it's causing this backup. But if we can clear and prevent that, then signals are able to be transmitted better. Now, when it comes down to the aldehyde dehydrogenase, this is very important. So the increase in aldehyde dehydrogenase can help us metabolize things like alcohol and other toxins in the liver. Like alcohol is eventually brought down into what's called acetaldehyde. So we need aldehyde dehydrogenase to break it down. So having this present in the brain indicates that it helps us break down some of these things into what are called carboxylases that other tissues can further break down. Complicated gobbledygook that essentially means this urolithin A has protective effects from potential toxins and other things in the brain, neuroprotective effects. Very, very illuminating stuff that we can really take to the bank. It's pretty awesome. So I'm not saying that pomegranates are the best longevity fruit. I mean, urolithin A is pretty darn awesome. But what I am saying is that pomegranates have the potential to be the best longevity fruit. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.